high school. And over the course of two years, he participated in several demonstrations throughout Southern California. Although he says he never hurt anyone, he yelled obscenities and did destroy property, which is a crime. While he walked away from the movement years ago, he's still following its growth and expansion. He's frightened by today's Antifa members who are far more brutal and bolder than anything he ever experienced. Gabriel Nadales joins me now. Uh, Gabriel, why do you think the tactics of Antifa have become more extreme and, as we've seen, really violent? I think they're mad that President Trump is doing such a great job. Unfortunately, because the left and Antifa, it's just, uh, they don't stand for something. They really aren't there to stand against something. And unfortunately, what that something is, is somebody like President Trump who, who likes, purports American values. He likes the military. He likes the police. He, he supports the Constitution. Meanwhile, Antifa, they just want to destroy the Constitution. Now, how close are they? Are they aligned to the American left and uh, more liberal Democrats? Well, I think that Antifa is, uh, it's just, to know what, where Antifa comes from, you have to look at the college campuses. Uh, for example, we have m several professors from elite universities, like Dartmouth College. Yeah, my alma mater. He, yeah. uh, he wrote the book on Antifa. Yeah, Mark Gray. Mark Gray wrote the book uh, Antifa, the Anti-Fascist Handbook. And in this book, he's pro uh, supporting violence. He's advocating for violence. And not only that, then he, a significant portion of the proceeds of that book are going to Antifa legal funds to defend them and try to get them out of jail. How did you become involved? I mean, you seem like a clean-cut kid. You're a young guy. Uh, the world that you're, you know, is your oyster. How did you get wrapped up with this group? Well, again, in 2010, uh, I wanted to go to a protest. I wanted to make a difference. So I met a lot of them. And when I met them, I thought that I was doing some good. Did you meet them online? Or no, I met them, I met them by going to a protest that uh, I, well, I saw it online and I went to it. And that's how I just went to protest. You didn't go protest. to meet chicks. I know that. <laughs> no. Uh, so after I went there, though, uh, I got so involved. But then I felt uncomfortable about some of the things that they were saying, some of the things that we were doing. So I questioned them. And they were calling me the fascist. Uh, and then ultimately, I, I decided to leave. And it was actually thanks to the Leadership Institute that uh, I was introduced to conservative I know them. values. They're terrific. Yeah, yeah. They're a terrific organization. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you look at what happened to Andy No, mm -hmm. and we just heard from him on the show, he's such a soft-spoken guy. And he, I, I don't think he's really even political. But he is doing some of the reporting mm -hmm. that other journalists refuse to do. Yeah. And you see what happened to him. I mean, he could have been killed. He, he was badly injured. He could have. And the problem is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Antifa does not stand for something. They stand against something. They stand against the First Amendment. They, and Andy was just doing his job, trying to get the truth out. And then as soon as somebody recognized him, and they weren't taking any criticisms, so they attacked him. And then another one attacked him. I'm, I'm pretty certain that not everybody knew who Andy was at the time. They just saw a member of It's a pack it. mentality. Yeah, it's a pack mentality, and it's, it, it's a dangerous mentality, and now, we have to take it seriously. Now, you you mentioned the college campuses, and mm. you're right. This is where all the mischief starts, and also parents who aren't the first educators of their children and don't even know what their kids are doing. Um, I want to get your reaction to this disturbing story out of Texas. Now, Campus Reform is reporting that incoming Texas freshmen are being threatened with doxing. That means publishing their you know, personal uh, contact information if they join conservative campus groups. Mm -hmm. Apparently a self-described Antifa student is behind this. Yeah, and the problem is that these students haven't even done anything. They're saying if you even consider joining a conservative organization, you're gonna get doxxed. And it was thanks to a campus reform's uh, coverage of the story that the university started to take it seriously. Because at first they kind of just wanted to say like, oh, they're not really our students. But since uh, campus reform reported on the story, they reached out to the Texas Attorney General to look for legal remedies. And this is what we have to do because it's not the only college. It's not just Dartmouth College. It's not just UT Austin. It's happening in colleges all throughout, which is actually why I'm excited because I'm, I'm going to be doing a college tour, uh, speaking to college campuses on my. It's going to be called Behind the Black Mask, so I can tell college. Great. So I can tell college students about uh, how violence is never the answer, and we should be talking, not fighting. Yeah. Who who else is wearing masks? I mean, we talk about the KKK. We talk about extremist organizations. Who else is wearing a mask? These great courageous warriors for Marxism or whatever they think Marxism is. 
but they're such cowards that they have to cover their faces. Did they do that when you showed up at that uh, rally? And you yeah, the first time I, I went there and I saw people with black masks, and then I got I started wearing black too. It's honestly, if you're wearing a black mask, you're more than likely up to something that's not good. Uh, I look forward to your campus tour. Will you keep us informed as to what you're doing? Because it's, it's critical that people who've been there and reported on it keep talking about it because I think a lot of the Democrats just want to close their eyes and hope this goes away. This must be dealt with seriously. We're not exaggerating. Someone is going to get killed. An Antifa member already got killed, but someone else is going to get killed. Uh, thank you very much, Gabriel, for being here and being witness to this. Two prominent GOP senators recently introduced a resolution that would